you know what I think happened originally, I think, is is they built wood boards and, and the ends of them, either the nose or the tail, they get dinged, they set them up on the, you know, lean them against a tree, I don't know, beach, and it would ding the tail or the nose, and and they used to make boards um, out of wood, and, and uh, they would they'd varnish them with, like, boat varnish, um, and then they went to fiberglass. Regardless, either one of them was meant to make the board waterproof, and and if the end of the board got dinged, then it wasn't waterproof anymore, and the wood would soak up water and uh, start creeping into the board. And I think probably originally it was a, a, uh, a it was a practical thing. They'd use a harder wood, like redwood, on a balsa wood board, and they'd put a cap on the end of the the board, probably to protect it. I could be wrong. I don't know. All I know, that's my guess. Um, it turned into a pretty thing. A lot of people think that they need to be pretty looking, and I think they look good pretty. So, um, we're going to make one of those. Back in the day, they had a bucket. They'd get it. Uh, they put some resin in there, and they put some pigment, some yellow pigment. And then they would take a little bit of that pigment in different colors and mix it up in the resin. And they'd use a stir stick. There's one of the stir sticks there. And you can see all the different colors on here. And the end of it, cut that off. And, uh, they'd use this to, to mix the resin. And this one, this stir, stir stick right here came actually from the Hobie factory from years ago. Uh, I think probably, uh, oh, Ronald, Raymond Patterson, those guys. Maybe Mike Muir. Uh, this probably was before Mike Muir today is down there, but maybe Danny Bronner. They'd use this to mix it, and hey, you don't want to throw away a stick. I mean, it's an expensive stick. You don't want to throw that away after one one time use. So they just the resin would go off, get hard, and then they'd use it again. And so it builds up all these layers. It's kind of like a tree, tree rings. Um, you know, I don't know. This is about probably I'm gonna guess about 30, maybe 40 boards old. <laughs> This, uh, this here is a piece that was cut down. My dad made some chopsticks out of it. Uh, they're really cool chopsticks. The problem is, is that uh, if you eat some hot, hot noodles or something like that, then the chopsticks get warm and then they get soft and they kind of start getting flimsy. So <laughs> you gotta be careful. <laughs> take and make buttons out of them. I looked for a shirt. I, got, I think I got a few shirts that have buttons um, made out of the resin. This one here is, made out of just different colors of resin. Here's one, it's kind of, it's not, not done yet, but it's got the holes drilled in it. You can see the stir stick in the middle. There's two little holes, you sew right through that. Um, great on a Hawaiian shirt. They would take that stir stick and they'd, they'd lay it down uh, in a box and they'd let it sit there, kind of tip it up on edge and the resin, the colored resin would drip off of it and they'd, you know, from whatever color they mixed up and then they'd go onto the next board, they'd go grab that same stir stick. Usually the resin had already gone off so it wouldn't contaminate the new color and then they'd mix it and then, yeah, that's how those things got built or made, you know, built up. Uh, this came from inside the box. So those are all the different colors of the boards that were made. And this is probably 1970, I don't know, four or five, something like that. So, um, you see a lot of those colors today. Uh, there's a stir stick. Probably one fell over and nobody wanted to fish it out. So there it is laying in there, buried in the resin. And it's kind of fun to make uh, tail blocks out of it. It's a little piece of history. It gets put into a board that's being built today. Here's, uh, here's a piece of floor resin right here. It's got some clear in it, a couple different colors. It's pretty ugly looking right now, but you'll see I'm gonna put it on the board. It'll, it'll look really good when it gets all sanded down nice and fine. This is just a, a wood tail block right here that I glued up. It's uh, cedar and balsa wood. You know, that would go on the end of the board like that. You know, glue it on there and shape it down. This one would look kind of nice. Kind of a standard one I put on a, a board like this, or I glue it up. You know, I glue up pieces of wood like this here, or this piece, and I'll just cut off a piece, you know, glue that on there. That's kind of a nice looking one. This one looks all right too. Kind of boring though, I wanna put a resin one on today. Looking at this board and I thought today, I think I'd like to use some of this dark wood right here. 
Uh, and I was thinking about using some balsa wood, but nah, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of the resin. And I've got a piece of a blank I cut off the end. Uh, and I got a piece of this same color wood in here. I think this stuff is some secret. It's kind of chocolate colored. I think it comes from the jungles of South Carolina or something. I'm sure it's made in the US. I'm gonna get this piece of wood out of here. So this is a piece of uh, redwood. It's a little scrap. I don't know. It's like one of these pieces, and I'm like, ah, I gotta do something. Oh no, I'll make a sanding block. So I took a little bit of adhesive and put a piece of sandpaper on there, and it's about time to change it, I think. But that works. So there you go, there's a tail block, a one of a kind, one and only, on this Hobie Classic, and uh, it's a stock board, so get it while it lasts. <laughs>